This is an overview that you've seen already showing basically how cells can obtain energy from fuel molecules. Cells can take glucose and break it down through the process of cellular respiration in order to produce energy for work. And that energy is in the form of ATP. And um, in the process of doing this, the cell makes some waste products, carbon dioxide and water. So what we're going to do for the rest of this module is really focus in on this process of cellular respiration. How does the cell accomplish this? How does the cell um, convert glucose into a usable form of energy? So let's start by looking at just the overall chemical equation. This is kind of more of a more of a conceptual way to look at cellular respiration. Let's look at the chemical way to look at it. So again, we're starting with a molecule of glucose and we combine that with some oxygen. And what the cell does is uses a bunch of enzymes. There are a whole series of reactions that take place. Um, those reactions are facilitated or catalyzed by enzymes in the cell. And as a result of those reactions, the output from this reaction is carbon dioxide and water. Those are the waste products. The cell doesn't need those. The cell uh, gets rid of them. And then we make ATP. The cell makes ATP. So that's, I have that in red because that's kind of like the whole goal. This is what cellular respiration is accomplishing. It's taking a glucose molecule and converting it into ATP. So, as I was mentioning, um, right here I have multiple arrows just to represent the fact that there are many chemical reactions that have to take place in order for this to be accomplished. So what we will do is break those uh, reaction steps down into three major components. We're going to talk about these one at a time in order. These three stages are uh, all together what makes up cellular respiration. So this is a big process, cellular respiration. Cellular respiration includes glycolysis, which takes place in the cytoplasm of the cell. And that's followed by the citric acid cycle, which takes place in mitochondria. And that's followed by the electron transport chain, which is also inside of mitochondria. So we're going to walk through these one at a time, starting with glycolysis. In glycolysis, we begin with a molecule of glucose and at the end of this whole process, after electron transport has completed, at the end what will have happened is we'll, the cell will have generated about 32 ATP molecules from that one starting glucose molecule. So that's a lot of ATP that the cell can get from one glucose. So let's go ahead and look at the details of glycolysis, some of the details. In glycolysis, the cell starts with a glucose molecule. Whoops, that should be glucose. Uh, I will fix that typo in the notes before I post them. A glucose molecule is split to form two pyruvic acid molecules. So we start with glucose, which is a six carbon sugar. These little balls are just representing a carbon atom. So we have six carbon atoms in this molecule. And at the end of glycolysis, what we end up with are two molecules of pyruvic acid. Notice how each one has three carbons. So essentially, we've taken the glucose, split it in half in order to produce these two over here. In the process of doing this, there has to be an initial input of energy. So the cell actually uses two ATP molecules but later on, the cell generates some ATP. So we generate two ATPs here and two ATPs here. So we use two ATPs, we generate four. The net result is that we have made two ATPs in the process of glycolysis. So we've made a little bit of energy just from this first stage of cellular respiration called glycolysis. The other thing I want to draw your attention to is there's another molecule that gets produced here. Uh, and that's this one, NADH. What this molecule is, essentially, is a little shuttle. And so it's going to pick something up and shuttle it over to another location in the cell. And specifically, what is it shuttling? It's shuttling some electrons. And so as these bonds get broken in glucose, um, and as these molecules get processed, some electrons from the bonds get taken up by NAD+, and it converts that molecule into this form, NADH, and that's gonna be like the little shuttle. So we produce a couple of those electron shuttles, uh, one here and one here, and those are called NADH. After glycolysis is complete, these molecules 
pyruvic acids, these are going to continue on into the next stage of processing. So after glycolysis, each of those pyruvic acid molecules, we say that they get groomed. And same idea as like if a dog gets groomed, essentially they get a trim, they get a little bit of a haircut. So this pyruvic acid, what's going to happen is one of the carbon atoms is going to get trimmed off. Okay, so it gets groomed. Pyruvic acid loses a carbon, and that carbon leaves in the form of CO2. Okay, so there's one of our waste products from cellular respiration. It's a CO2 molecule being produced right there. So that brings us down to a molecule that has just two carbons left. That's called acetic acid. We're going to end up making another molecule of NADH, another electron shuttle molecule. It's going to pick up some electrons from acetic acid, carry them away. And acetic acid, in the end here, acetic acid gets attached to a molecule called coenzyme A. And this is just in purple. This uh, coenzyme A is kind of just like an escort. It's going to take this molecule and carry it off to the next part of the cycle. All right, so the next part of the, of the processing here for glucose is to enter the citric acid cycle. This is something that takes place inside of the mitochondria. Okay, so inside of the mitochondria is where this processing is happening. So we have acetic acid right here being escorted by CoA, coenzyme A. Acetic acid gets brought into this cycle, gets sent into the citric acid cycle, and this is a cycle that can keep going round and round um, to process more and more acetic acid molecules. So it's just kind of, it can be kind of a continuous thing. Uh, but anyway, acetic acid molecules enter into this cycle, and as a result of each acetic acid molecule entering, basically, um, basically this is just going to complete the breakdown of acetic acid. So in the end, this bond is going to be broken and each carbon will end up in a molecule of CO2. So we make some more waste products. We also make some ATP from this cycle. And perhaps even more importantly, we make quite a few electron shuttle molecules, NADH and also FADH2. Okay, so both of those are electron shuttle molecules. What do those shuttle molecules do? We haven't gotten to that yet. So far we've just been noting, oh, we generate electron shuttle molecules. Where do these electrons end up going? Where do they get shuttled to? Let's continue on into the next cycle.